announced that it had executed Ali Reza Akbari, a British Iranian dual national. I know that the thoughts of the whole House will be with his wife and two daughters at the time of their loss. They have shared his ordeal, an ordeal which began just over three years ago when he was lured back to Iran. He was detained and then subject to the notorious and arbitrary legal process of the regime. Before his death, Mr Akbari described what was done to him and how torture had been used. Let there be no doubt he fell victim to the political vendettas of a vicious regime. His execution was the cowardly and shameful act of a leadership which thinks nothing of using the death penalty as a political tool to silence dissent and settle internal scores. In February last year, Mr Akbari's family asked the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office for our support, and we have worked closely with them ever since. I want to pay tribute to their courage and their fortitude throughout this terrible period. In line with their wishes, my noble friend Lord Ahmed, the Minister of State, lobbied Iran's most senior diplomats in the UK as soon as we learned that Mr Akbari's execution was imminent. We maintained the pressure right up until the point of his execution, but sadly, to no avail. When we heard of the tragic news on Saturday morning, we acted immediately to demonstrate our revulsion. I ordered the summoning of Iran's charge d'affaires to the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office to make clear the strength of our feeling. Our ambassador in Tehran delivered the same message to a senior foreign ministry official. Ten other countries have publicly condemned the execution, including France, Germany and the United States. The European Union has done the same, and I am grateful for their support at this time. We then imposed sanctions on Iran's Prosecutor General, Mohammad Jafar Montazeri, who bears heavy responsibility for the use of death penalty for political ends. His designation is the latest of over 40 sanctions imposed by the UK on the Iranian regime since October, including six individuals linked to the revolutionary courts which have passed egregious sentences against protesters, including the death penalty. In addition, I have temporarily recalled His Majesty's Ambassador, Simon Shirtcliffe, from Tehran for consultations, and we met and discussed this earlier today. Now we should consider what further steps, alongside our allies, we take to counter the escalating threat from Iran. We do not limit ourselves to the steps that I have already announced. Mr Akbari's execution follows decades of pitiless repression by a ruthless regime. Britain stands with the brave and dignified people of Iran as they demand their rights and freedoms. Just how much courage that takes is shown by the appalling fact that over 500 people have been killed and 18,000 have been arrested during the recent wave of protests. Instead of listening to the calls for change within Iran, the regime has resorted to its usual tactics of blaming outsiders and lashing out against its supposed enemies, including by detaining a growing number of foreign nationals for political gain. Today, there are many European nationals being held in Iranian prisons on spurious charges, including British dual nationals. And I pay tribute to our staff, both in Tehran and here in the UK, who continue to work tirelessly on their behalf and to secure their release. And beyond its borders, the regime has supplied Russia with hundreds of armed drones used to kill civilians in Ukraine. Across the Middle East, Iran continues to inflict bloodshed and destruction by supporting extremist militias. And all the while, the steady expansion of the Iranian nuclear programme is threatening international peace and security and the entire system of global non-proliferation. In the last three months alone, Britain has imposed five separate packages of sanctions on Iran, and today we enforce designations against over 300 Iranian individuals and entities. We have condemned 
the regime in every possible international forum, securing Iran's removal from the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, and alongside our partners, creating a new UN mechanism to investigate the regime's human rights violations during these recent protests. But the House should be in no doubt that we are witnessing the vengeful actions of a weakened and isolated regime, obsessed with suppressing its own people, debilitated by its own fear of losing power and wrecking its international reputation. Our message to that regime is clear. The world is watching you and you will be held to account, particularly by the brave Iranian people, so many of whom you are oppressing and killing. And I commend this statement to the House. Yeah. Yeah. I don't call Shadow Minister Bambas Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I also want to thank the Foreign Secretary for giving me advance sight of his statements. I'm responding on behalf of the opposition today as my right honourable friend, the member for Tottenham, is on a visit to Northern Ireland, so is unable to be here today. The execution of Ali Reza Akbari is the most horrendous human rights abuse, a barbaric act of politically motivated murder at the hands of the Iranian regime. The whole House's condolences and solidarity are with his family at a time of unimaginable grief. That the Iranian regime chose to take Mr Akbari's life to make a political point to the British government is a disgrace. The death penalty should never be used for any crime, but in Iran we must call these executions what they are a gross attempt to silence a, a protest movement by striking fear into the hearts of the ordinary Iranian people. In Mr Akbari's case, this execution is a direct message to the British government. They are, in the words of Volker Turk, the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights, state-sanctioned killings. Mr Akbari returned to Iran after a successful career in business in the UK to advise the government on the nuclear deal between the West and Iran. He wanted to see a successful deal to end the Western sanctions on the country. We have discussed many times in this House the importance of a strong response to this brutal regime. The government must now prescribe the IRGC, either through the existing process or through amending the National Security Bill, to create a new process of prescription for hostile state actors. The playbook of this regime is to use brutality and violence for its own political ends and its own survival. In his most recent Threat update, MI5 Director Ken McCallum referred to 10 kidnap uh, and death plots by the Iranian regime on British soil. When an organisation threatens the lives of British journalists and British Iranian activists in the UK, that organisation is a terrorist organisation. So I'd like to ask the Minister, when will he prescribe this heinous organisation and what actions he will take to protect the lives of British Iranians and in the UK and in Iran? And also, uh, I hear what he said about the condemnation internationally, but what further conversations has he had with international partners to have a coordinated response to condemn and contain all the regime's appalling attack on the lives and human rights of its own people? Thank you. Foreign yeah. Secretary. Mr Speaker, I thank the uh, Honourable Gentleman's uh, um, uh, comments on the solidarity that the whole House sends to the family of Mr uh, Akbari. Um, he will know that the uh, future prescription or uh, sanctions designation of individuals or entities is not something that we uh, speculate about or discuss at the dispatch box. However, he should know um, that we share the revulsion that he expressed at the dispatch box. As I said, we do not limit ourselves to the actions that we have already announced. And I have spoken uh, with uh, His Majesty's Ambassador for Tehran and will, of course, be speaking with uh, other parts of government about what further action that we can take in response to uh, the vile behaviour of uh, the regime. And I can assure him that we speak regularly with our international friends on our collective response to Iran, both in the region and beyond, and we will continue to do so. So the Committee, Select Committee, Alicia Katz. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The thoughts of the entire Foreign Affairs Committee are with Mr Akbari's family. From hostage-taking to terrorist plots, assassinations, nuclear extortion, destabilisation of the Middle East and Europe, Iran is a terrorist state and they have weaponised human life. This is the first murder of a dual national since the 1980s, a clear escalation. So I make four asks. The House is clear that we do need to prescribe the IRGC. This is a policy decision, not a legal one. Can he confirm that he recognises that to be the case? 
Secondly, we need to close down the IRGC's operating centres within the UK, for example, that in Maida Vale. These are centres for spreading hostile influence within the UK. Can he also confirm that he will consider reactive sanctions to help the ordinary Iranians for whom no one else will stand up? After every state murder, we should impose sanctions to show that we will give their voice some support. And finally, can he reassure me that he is confident of the safety of our staff in Tehran? Because I remember the stories of my colleagues who were under siege from the Iranian state in the past, and I'm gravely concerned about their safety at this time. Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my uh, honourable friend uh, and the chair of the Select Committee raises incredibly important uh, points. Um, uh, sh she knows the long-standing convention about speculating about sanctions and, pros uh, and prescriptions, but um, I absolutely take the points that she has made about ensuring that the, uh, the response that we take here in the UK and indeed the response that we take in conjunction with our international partners sends an incredibly clear message to the regime that these actions are unacceptable and they will be responded to each and every time they take place. Um, with regard to, as I say, the actions that we take domestically here within the UK, and I can assure her that we work closely with our Home Affairs colleagues uh, on our collective response, and I agree with her that the safety of our um, team in Tehran is incredibly important. I pay a tribute to the work that they do in incredibly challenging circumstances, and I also pay tribute to the uh, demonstrations of international solidarity that we regularly receive from other platforms in Tehran. SMP spokesperson Drew Pendry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I also thank the Foreign Secretary for advance sight of his statement. On behalf of the SNP, we utterly condemn the execution of Aloriza Akbari in the strongest possible terms, and we extend our heartfelt condolences to his family. Once again, this execution highlights the serious injustice and failings of the Iranian judicial system. The Foreign Secretary's decision to sanction Iran's prosecutor is welcome. Uh, however, as we have been calling for many times, I would urge the Foreign Secretary again to go further and to prescribe um, the, uh, the, to, to take forward the formal prescription of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps as a terrorist organisation. So I ask him again, will he commit uh, to that? We remain deeply concerned about the safety of other arbitrarily detained UK Iranian nationals. Morad Tabaz held for five years, Miran Rauf held since 2020. Their families just want to see them come home safely. So what is the government doing about making that a reality? And does the Secretary of State know just how many dual UK Iranian nationals are currently detained in Iran? And can he tell us that number? The Foreign Office cannot make the same mistakes it has made in the past to other dual nationals such as Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe, Anushi Ashuri and other UK Iranian nationals detained and, as we have heard, sometimes tortured. This shameful execution should serve as an urgent wake-up call, um, and these people and their families deserve better. What lessons has this government learned, and what are they going to do differently in future to support these people? Mr Speaker, I can assure the uh, honourable gentleman that we work tirelessly, tirelessly to support the release of uh, British dual nationals held in detention uh, in uh, Iran, and our consular team uh, support the families uh, of those. Um, the, the, the work that we do in Tehran, the work that our ambassador and his team do in Tehran, uh, is incredibly important. Um, and it is to ensure, their presence there is to ensure that British dual nationals, whether they be in incarceration or not, are uh, supported. And we will continue to work with our um, uh, international friends and allies to secure the release of, um, of those uh, the individuals. With regard to prescription, he does raise an important point. He will have heard the answers I have given to other colleagues, that we do not limit ourselves to the, issue, to the uh, responses we have already announced. Dr. Matthew Arthur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a terrible day when we see the execution of a British subject. Um, in, but in response to some uh, broadcast media, that uh, the decision by the Iranian regime to execute this individual came as a response to the repeated calls for prescription of the IRGC in a debate last week. In contrary, Broadcast media not only uh, gave an interview with his family, but also broadcast his comments about his torture by this vile regime. 
So does that show the <coughs> Secretary of State, as it does to me, not only the power of the media broadcast, but also will he ensure that the funding of BBC Radio Persia will continue to ensure that the people of Iran can hear the truth and that will one day oversee the downfall of this vile regime? Foreign Secretary. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, uh, my honourable friend raises an incredibly important point about our ability to project our values into Iran. The fact that millions of Iranians are protesting against their own government shows that there are, are, are many people, many, many people in Iran who share our values and are deeply opposed to the uh, regime that oppresses them. Um, I have actually spoken with uh, the BBC senior leadership about the funding of our uh, foreign language uh, world service broadcasts, including uh, in uh, Persia the Persian uh, um, uh, broadcast, uh, and I can assure him that whether it be through the BBC World Service or whether it be through the work that is uh, done by our embassy, by the ambassador and his team, we will continue to project our values into, the, into Iran uh, and hopefully reinforce and indeed uh, um, um, uh, show solidarity with those brave Iranians protesting against their own regime. And this slaughter. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr Akbari was my constituent, and I would like to offer my sympathies to his family here and abroad. I've been representing their interests in the past year, and I've had extensive contact with the past few difficult days. Their strength and courage have been extraordinary in the face of the brutality and cruelty of the Iranian regime. Early today, I spoke to Mr Akbari's daughter in the UK, and she asked me to raise a further distressing matter with the Foreign Secretary, the regime refuses to release Mr Akbari's body or to allow burial in the place chosen by him and have made threats to destroy his body unless the family cooperates with their instructions. The cemetery where they were told he should be buried informed the family that burial already took place last week, casting doubt on the time of his execution. Will the Foreign Secretary meet with me and the family in the UK? and do what His Majesty's Government can to ensure that in death, if not in life, Mr Akbari is treated with dignity and respect. Foreign Secretary. Mr Speaker, the, the points that the Honourable Gentleman just raised, uh, has just raised, I'm sure, fill us all with uh, revulsion. We will continue to support the family in whatever way uh, we can, and he is absolutely right to call upon the regime uh, to treat uh, Mr Akbari in death with the uh, uh, deference and respect that is um, uh, legitimate. Um, I will follow up on the points he made with uh, our ambassador uh, and communicate our um, inc incredible discomfort with the, the points he's just raised. And as I say, we'll continue to support the family in whichever ways we can. Henry Schmidt. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, my right honourable friend, the Foreign Secretary, spoke very eloquently about the brutal hostility uh, that the regime in Tehran uh, is visiting, not only upon its own citizens, but uh, on Ukraine in terms of its support for Russia and in neighboring countries in the Middle East as well. Uh, and of course, uh, the execution of a UK passport holder. Uh, does that not now mean we should be prescribing the Iranian uh, Revolutionary yeah, yeah. Guard and reviewing the UK's involvement in the Iran nuclear agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Foreign Secretary. Mr. Speaker, my honourable friend raises incredibly important points. We will continue to work with our, uh, our friends and allies to ensure that Iran never acquires uh, a nuclear a weapon. Uh, with regard, as I say, to uh, what further action we take, we do not limit ourselves to the announcements that we've just made. And part of the reason why I have temporarily recalled uh, His Majesty's Ambassador to Tehran is so that we can discuss cross-government what our further response might be. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I, of course, this is, Mr Akbari's judicial murder is particularly poignant for us because he was a dual national, but all the murders that have been committed by the Iranian government over the last few uh, days and weeks prove that they give a new meaning to the term criminal justice system, more criminal than justice. Um, I do worry, however, that the Minister is always very reluctant to talk about further sanctions 
Um, government ministers have invented this rule that they're not allowed to talk about them at the dispatch box just because it's a bit inconvenient for them. Isn't it time we actually had a proper parliamentary process for determining some of these? Because frankly, if it was up to the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I suspect if it was up to this House, we'd have taken action six months ago and we wouldn't still be hanging around now. Where is Secretary? Uh, Mr Speaker, the, um, the Honourable Gentleman speaks with great passion on this, and I know he takes personal interest in the, um, uh, in the use of sanctions, and we have discussed this in terms of my appearances before the Select Committee. I think it's actually important that we maintain a clear distinction between the executive uh, functions and the scrutiny functions, and whilst I understand there is a huge amount of embedded experience within the House, I think the job of government is to government, the job of this House is to scrutinise the government, and that's why that division of labour is important. Looking forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The ex execution of Al Reza Akbari is a hideous act. It's very clear that the Iranian regime will do nothing to stop its desire to repress its people, whether that is arrest, torture, or indeed murder um, of its innocent citizens, many of whom are women. Uh, many colleagues from across this House have called for the IGRC to be prescribed. I would like to add my name to that list, and I would also urge the Foreign Secretary to continue to work with our allies to try and get a global consensus with our allies on this issue. My, my right hon. Friend um, highlights something I think we should all consider. The actions taken by the Iranian regime are a display of weakness and not strength. They live in fear of the voices of the Iranian people. That is why the regime is responding so brutally. And my advice to them, I have no doubt they won't take it, is to listen to their own people, to stop blaming external actors for actions stimulated by their oppression of their own people. And I can assure my right honourable friend that we will continue to work closely with our international friends and allies, so many of whom have expressed solidarity over the weekend in response to Mr Akbari's execution. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The execution of Ali Reza Akbari is, is horrendous. And if we ever wanted proof that we are dealing with barbarians, it is this and what's happened over the last few months. Um, I urge the Foreign Secretary, whilst he is considering prescription and, and the harshest possible sanctions, and I would like to add the voices of the Liberal Democrats to that and offer our support, to consider another move. We've learned from the Ukraine war that actually if you go after individuals and the spoils of their human rights abuses, that is one very effective way to also sanction. I ask him, what consideration has the government given to doing an audit of any assets from those we have sanctioned, but particularly from those family members who may be resident here in the UK? And can he assure this House that there isn't a single penny of their spoils that is sloshing around the British economy? Mr Speaker, we will, of course, uh, always examine ways of ensuring that our sanctions are most effective and have the deterrent effect. Uh, uh, as well as the punitive effect that they are uh, designed to, uh, to have. Um, and I can assure the uh, Honourable Lady that we will continue working closely with, as I say, our friends and allies internationally who share our revulsion uh, at, the, uh, at the actions of the uh, Iranian regime. Uh, she describes the regime as a barbarian. I think one of the great ironies is that uh, Iran uh, has a long history, a multi-millennial history, of sophistication and thoughtfulness. And that history, that reputation is being destroyed on a daily basis by the people who are currently um, holding the levers of power in Tehran. I think that is a massive shame for the Iranian people more broadly. Bob Black. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And uh, I'd like to thank my right honourable friend for his statement and indeed express my sympathy to the family of Mr Akbari, who are going through such terrible times at the moment. We should remember however, that Iran is the second highest carrying out of executions anywhere in the world, yep. second only to China. Yep. So this is not something that is isolated, this is something the regime implement. Can I commend my right honourable friend to read the debate in Hansard that we held last Thursday, where more than 30 contributions from across the House gave excellent examples of what is going on in Iran. He can negotiate with our allies to impose sanctions against Iran 
totally, which will isolate the regime. He could also talk to the Home Secretary about prescription of the IRGC. That is the settled view of this House. Mm. So he has the support of the House on all sides, on all parties. Surely that must be enough to actually prescribe the IRGC in its entirety and sequestrate their assets for once and for all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr Speaker, my, uh, my honourable friend uh, I think is right to um, uh, pay tribute to the strong and clear stance that this House has taken in response to the brutality meted out by the Iranian regime. And I can assure him uh, and the House that we will continue to work uh, cross-government department and internationally and the most effective ways of um, uh, curtailing Iran's malign activity both within Iran, within the region and globally. Kim Jones. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'd like to send my sincere condolences to the family and loved ones of Mr Akbari. The use of the death penalty is appalling under all circumstances, are the practices of torture and prolonged sol um, solitary confinement, all of which Mr Akbari was subjected to while being held by the Iranian authorities. Amnesty has called for the UK Government to work with international bodies to fully investigate Mr Agbari's allegations of torture and all other ill-treatment, and to pursue the criminal investigation of officials reasonably suspected of involvement in crimes under international law. Will the Minister agree today to take up these calls for justice? <laughs> I can assure the Honourable Lady that we will not rest until, the, until, the, uh, until this regime is held to account for the brutality and atrocities that they have meted out to their uh, own people, uh, and we will do so in close cooperation with our friends in the international community. Carolina. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Southampton has a significant Anglo-Iranian community, and many of them have made the point to me that this is a regime that can only maintain its position through terror and torture. But they are scared. They are scared for their family members, they are scared for women, they are scared for dual nationals, they are scared for students. And they want to see the prescription of the IRGC, and they want me to leave my right honourable friend in no doubt that Anglo-Iranians in this country wish to see our government do more. Foreign Secretary. I can assure the, uh, I can assure the right honourable lady that we will uh, continue working cross department, uh, cross Whitehall. Uh, to make sure that those uh, Iranians who uh, have chosen to make the UK their home, those Anglo-Iranians who live here in the UK, uh, feel safe. It is, our, it is the first duty of government to protect the people within these shores, and I, I, I can assure her we take that responsibility incredibly seriously. Hilary Ben. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Speaker. Can I thank the Foreign Secretary for what he has said about the brutal murder of Mr Akbari. The sad truth, however, is that the Iranian regime does these things because it can. Um, there are voices who have called for the JCPOA process to be abandoned. I'd be very grateful if the right honourable gentleman could tell the House what his current view is. Can I, can I caution him that in the absence of that, what other means would we have of preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon, which given their current behaviour, is surely unthinkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, the Right Honourable Gentleman makes an incredibly uh, important point. Uh, we hear calls from Tehran for us to uh, lift uh, sanctions. We remind them that these sanctions are imposed because of their behaviour, whether it be violations of human rights, whether it be brutality against their own people, whether it be the uh, support of uh, militias uh, in the region, or indeed because of their attempts to acquire a nuclear weapon. We will continue to work closely with our uh, international partners uh, in, 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 in preventing Iran from acquiring uh, a nuclear weapon. And negotiations uh, on the uh, JCPOA have not progressed. The ball is very much in the court of the uh, Iranians. And uh, what I would say very strongly to them is that the world will, um, will continue to work in concert and solidarity to prevent them acquiring a nuclear weapon. And if they wish sanctions to be lifted, the regime has to fundamentally change its behaviours. John Whittington. Um, my honourable friend, the member for Hendon, was right to draw attention to the power of the media in exposing what is going on in Iran. 
but my right honourable friend will be aware of the continuing threats against journalists working for Iran International, whose headquarters in Chiswick is under permanent armed police guard. Will he make clear to the Iranian regime that threats on British soil of this kind against journalists are utterly unacceptable? Yeah. And will he consider extending the sanctions against anyone in the Iranian regime responsible for making threats against journalists? Yeah. Foreign Secretary. My, my right honourable my right honourable friend uh, uh, echoes the point that the Iranian regime is fearful of criticism, and it is particularly fearful of criticism from uh, within Iran itself and from uh, Iranians uh, internationally. That's why they behave so petulantly and aggressively uh, towards uh, journalists, and that's why we have uh, an in incredibly important responsibility to protect those journalists, to support those dissenting voices, and I can give him the assurance on behalf of uh, my colleagues uh, in, the, in, in the Home Office and Security Services that we will continue to support the free expression of those brave Iranian voices that are criticising a regime which currently has a stranglehold around their country. No, my, my. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my heart goes out to the family and friends of Mr. Akbari. This Iranian regime is using the death penalty as a tool of political repression against courageous protesters. This IRGC regime also threatens, as we've heard, the lives of journalists and British Iranian activists here in the UK. We did see cross-party support here last week for prescribing the IRGC. <coughs> so I will ask the Secretary of State again if he will answer this time. Will the UK government take action and urgently brand the IRGC as a terrorist organisation? Yeah, yeah. Foreign Secretary. Uh, the Honourable Lady is, uh, is, is, is right to raise the need to uh, respond to the actions that have been taken by the Iranian regime. As I say, I've uh, announced an initial, an initial set of responses uh, immediately after the execution of Mr Akbari. And as I've said to the House, we will work, um, I will listen, uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm a consult, I am consulting with HMA Tehran uh, um, today, I have done today, and we will work cross government to ensure that our response to Iran is robust and deters further actions of this kind. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Right Honourable Friend for his excellent uh, statement. Uh, but can my Right Honourable Friend confirm that he will be discussing the execution of Mr. Akbari on his visit to Washington uh, this week and assure us that he will be seeking to coordinate the strongest response? with our allies in response to this latest state-sponsored torture and killing, as well as Iran's escalating human rights abuses against women and wider security threat. Foreign Secretary. I can assure my honourable friend that uh, our response to the Iranian regime in general and the response to uh, this execution in particular will be one of those things that I address with both my uh, American and Canadian counterparts uh, when I visit those two countries uh, later on uh, this week. And I can assure her and indeed uh, the House that those messages of solidarity that we, we've received from our international partners reflect the strength of feeling that I receive in conversations when I uh, have them about this issue. Mr. Speaker, the vile Iranian regime is operating through proxies in this country. Uh, my honourable friend for Hampson Kilburn and I have been working closely with the police in respect of the Islamic Community Centre in Maida Vale and the weekly counter protests that are now occurring there. Um, these are causing very real concern in this residential community. Can the Secretary of State tell us what investigations he is carrying out into the operation of these centres and how they can be managed to protect local communities, including the very diverse Muslim communities in that area? Um, the Honourable Lady will understand, of course, that uh, actions that happen here in the UK are the responsibility of the Home Office, but I can assure her that my department and that department work closely uh, on these issues and we, continue, we will continue to do so uh, in relation to the issue that she's raised. Brigham. Whether I or not I sign confession papers, they will kill me. My only wish is to see my daughter one last time. After 10 years, God finally gave us a child. I only got to see her for 18 days. 
before being arrested for protesting. I miss my daughter so much. My only wish is to get to see my daughter one last time before they kill me. Those are the words of Hassan Farouzi, uh, another citizen who has been condemned to death and who, at the urging of a close Iranian friend in my constituency, I have adopted his case. Does the Foreign Secretary believe that it is helpful for members of Parliament to adopt individual people who are on death row in Iran to publicise their case and to put maximum pressure on the regime? Mr Speaker, I am genuinely grateful for the um, Honourable Gentleman's raising of this particular case. I know the Iranian regime hates it when their actions are called out on the international stage. I have made it clear to the Iranians that if they want the criticism to stop, their behaviour must change. The behaviour at the moment deserves criticism, deserves criticism in this chamber and indeed internationally. Um, and I commend all colleagues where they have the opportunity to, to raise the cases, to demonstrate to the brave Iranians who are standing up against the brutality of their own government that we show solidarity with them. Rachel Maskell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I add my condolences to others for the family of Mr Akbari at this very sad time. And I cannot see why the Secretary of State is delaying in prescribing the regime in, uh, in Iran and, and call on him to do so immediately. But in my human rights city uh, of York, we have serious concern about the use of the death penalty. Over 20,000 people on death row across over 55 jurisdictions right now. So will he lead a discussion within the UN to, to bring the use of state-authorised death to an end across the world, because when it is condoned in one country, it gives Iran more liberty to apply it in its own. Here, here, here. Yes, the Honourable Lady, I'm sure, will know that the UK opposes death penalty in all respects. We have communicated this internationally and we have communicated this to uh, the Iranian regime. Our position on this is long standing, it is principled, it will not change, and we will highlight this uh, opposition to the death penalty whenever uh, we have the opportunity to do so. Margaret Farrell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the Foreign Secretary for his statement, and I know that Lord Ahmed would have done everything in his power to stop this despicable act. I condemn the, the, the execution of Mr Akbari, a British-Iranian dual national, and I want to place in record my condolences to his wife and two daughters. Does the Foreign Secretary have concerns that ending the talks on the nuclear deal in the face of ongoing turmoil in the country could see Iran speed up its uranium enrichment programme or pull out of the treaty altogether. Where is that? Uh, Mr Speaker, the, uh, the international uh, community, the signatories to JCPOA, have given the opportunity for, uh, to the Iranian regime uh, to make changes. They have thus far failed to uh, grasp the opportunity presented to them. We will continue working to prevent them acquiring uh, a nuclear weapon, but the ball ultimately is in their court. If they want sanctions lifted, they have to change, fundamentally change, their behaviour. Right, that completes the statement. I'll just let people clear before we start the next one. Right, I call the Secretary of State for Defence, Ben Wallace. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. And uh, can I just start by apologising for uh, the way the information that is contained in the statement uh, has come out in the media? It doesn't do me any favours, nor does it make my job any easier. So I apologise to Mr. Speaker and to the House. Uh, it is certainly not my doing, and uh, I think it doesn't help uh, us in furthering the policy. Mr. Speaker, it's been a month since I last updated the House on the situation in Ukraine. Over the last four weeks, extremely heavy and attritional fighting has continued, especially around the Donetsk Oblast town of Bakhmut and in the less reported on sector of Kraminia, 